Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this narration of the web series The Nature on Predators. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 15 Memory Transcription Subject Slenek, Vendel Space Corps Date, Standardized Human Time, September 3rd, 2136 Nursing the human back to health became my obsession. The doctors were optimistic that Nurasal would make a full recovery, but I was determined not to vacate his side. There was no way I was leaving our well-being to chance ever again. My claws tightened around the fork, stabbing into the block of tofu. The spongy protein folded into the prongs, and I brought it up towards the human's mouth. My gaze lingered at the pointy canines beside his incisors, which looked perfect for tearing flesh. It felt unnatural placing my paw so near the predator's teeth while offering it food. A pins and needles sensation danced at the base of my toes, which I promptly ignored. Slanek, I can do this myself, Marcel protested. The predator was lounging around in his hospital bed, propped up against some pillows. After a fresh shave and some washing up, my human looked more like his old self. A nose splint concealed the deformed appendage, and stitches mended the gash on his cheek. Fluids and medication were distributed intravenously, which brought life back into his complexion. I glared at him. I am not going to let you, and that's that. Marcel rolled his eyes, but allowed me to insert the protein between his lips. I scrutinized him as he chewed. It was wonderful to see him eating real food after his long hunger. But I didn't have to lose sight of the big picture. Human medicine was primitive compared to ours, a school of medievalism. My vigilance was the only hope at preventing complications. All I knew was that Marcel's diet was essential to his recovery. It was my intention for him to continue to consume every calorie the medical staff gave us. I prepared a forkful of greens, which looked scrumptious and nearby, and shoved it at him. The red-haired primate sighed. He tugged the plate from my stubborn paws and set it on the bedside table. You gotta stop baby me. I'm fine, buddy. Really. The human began to sit up and grimaced as pain scorched across his ribs. See? Good as new. Tears welled up in my eyes. No, you're not. I'm on the mend. This is new normal, and that's okay. I'm tougher than you think I am. You're very strong and resilient and brave, but what? I almost lost you, Mark. And it scares me how much that hurts. Oh, it's over, Slinek. I'm never going to let anyone hurt us again, okay? Come here. I curled up on the bed and placed my chin on the predator's thigh. Marcel reached out with his nimble fingers, the same hesitancy that always splashed on his face when he was worried about spooking me surfaced. His hand hovered over the back of my neck for several seconds, and my heart rate skyrocketed. What was he doing? My instincts despised the location of his paw, and the way his nails were aimed at my head. It was a slash away from my throat. Everything about the body language mirrored a predator about to pounce. No amount of trust could alter those ominous cues. My eyes blinked shut, and I summoned all of my willpower to remain still. I felt a light touch on my ear. The human palmed the right one gently, then moved to the other. A breath I didn't realize I was holding escaped. Marcel beamed when he saw me relax, and took that as encouragement to continue. His fingers darted beneath my chin and ruffled the fur at my throat. The human's claws nicked my skin. They were rather dull, or a predator's offensive weapons. Oddly enough, it was more gratifying than painful. A happy mule emanated from my chest. I nuzzled against his side and flipped onto my back. You're so cute, he whispered. Without thinking, I'd exposed the most soft and vulnerable organ, my stomach. Marcel tickled my belly with vigor, which was quite the overwhelming sensation. I was embarrassed by my undignified squeals and laughs, but my control was slipping. I rolled around in delirium, thrashing and kicking. The human had to catch me when I was almost tumbled off the bed. He winced from the abnormal strain, but refused to drop me. Affection and warmth shined in his eyes. Am I interrupting something? Sarah stood in the doorway, amusement on her face. She stared at me, the blankets on the floor, then back at me. Actually, you were, but not what you think, Marcel chuckled. <laughs> what can I do for you? You look better. We're all happy to see it, she replied. But I just wanted a quick word with Slinek, alone. I tilted my head at the scientist, confused. 
Had the humans decided to blame me for my inability to prevent Marcel's injuries, did they think that he would be better off with someone stronger and more competent as their civic duties? I couldn't fault them if that were the case. My human released his grip and gave me an encouraging wave. Her paralyzing reluctance made me slow to follow Sarah, so I dragged my feet to the secluded spot in the hallway. A mature individual would accept the consequences of their own failure, especially when that failure landed their best friend in critical condition. A whisker away from death. I can't let him go, though. I slumped my shoulders. Look, Sarah, I am so sorry for what happened to Mark. My best friend was... Uh, terrorized by a madman, and I was nothing more than a liability. Now I take full responsibility for everything, I and accept whatever the UN has decided. If there is anything that I can do to make it right, slow down. The scientist raised a pale hand. Nobody blames you, least of all Marcel. I think having you around is helping him immensely. You do? It's obvious. He's trying to hide it, but I figure he's in a lot of pain. That's what I was worried about. So then, um... What is it that you needed to speak to me about? Oh, stars. Is there bad news about Mark? Perhaps it's not clear yet. If I remember correctly, he was frightened of torture by aliens before this, yeah? Sarah waited for my nod. She seemed concerned about how the phrase the next words. I think you need to be warned about what, how humans react to trauma. Our brains can often uh, have difficulty processing it. I studied her expression closely. What are you trying to say? Is Mal Sal going to go insane? Oh, that's not a polite word, Slenek. Everyone reacts differently. Marcel could be fine. And I hope he is, she said. But after what he's been through, he must be prepared for drastic changes in mood and personality. He could become depressed, forgetful, irritable, even hostile. Hostile? Nightmares and flashbacks are common in these cases. That can incite all sorts of negative reactions. My eyes widened in surprise. It never occurred to me that humans relived their worst experiences as vividly as we did. When I imagined how their brains worked, I always assumed it was different. No wonder Marcel was in a prolonged fog after watching ox or torture clips on their first day. Why would a predator have such an overblown fear response and cling to memories of prior threats? They were on the other side of that equation in nature. Even if humans descended from prey animals, they hadn't been there for millions of years. I guess it proves that humans are just people, like us. That their emotions resemble ours. You didn't say negative, you said hostile, I pointed out. Sarah shuffled her feet. Well, the memories trigger our flight or flight response. Some people lash out with physical violence, though they don't mean to. I think that unlikely to hear, but it is to be stated as a possibility. My breath hitched my throat, though I tried not to show my fright to the scientist. Physical violence... Being assaulted by a predator wasn't exactly on my bucket list. If a human lunged at me without warning, I doubted I could keep my composure. It would be tough to brush that off. The thought of Marcel, with his meaty hands clenched around my windpipe, stirred all of my subconscious fears. But I knew that that wasn't him. My human hadn't tried to eat me, even when he was starving. This mindless killer preserved my welfare to his own detriment, and never displayed anything but kindness towards me. As long as it was unintentional, I decided that I could forgive him for spontaneous violence. Sarah deemed it improbable, so in all likelihood, it wouldn't happen. The prospect of mental torture that would drive Marcel to violate his principles was more concerning to me. Why are you telling me this? I questioned. Maybe Sarah thinks that I wasn't being supportive enough, or she'll teach me what signs to watch for. Human mannerisms are so alien as alien gets. I don't want you to fault Marcel, or to think that it's proof that humans are evil. I know how frightened you and Lil are of us. If any of those symptoms would be too much to deal with, it may be best that we find you a more suitable partner. My ears battened against my head. Is that what the Terran scientific community believe we thought of them? That we saw them as interchangeable demons and volunteered just to vindicate that conclusion? That's right. We risked our lives waiting for them to slip up so we could say gotcha, I thought sarcastically. There was nobody in the galaxy, human, Venlil or otherwise, more suitable than Marcel. Being around him was pleasant and easy. I wasn't going to discard him, as second a challenge presented itself. You want me to leave him because he might be ill, I hissed. I don't want another partner. I want Marcel, and I'll deal with whatever happens. 
No, 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 no. We don't want you to leave. That's the opposite of what we want. Sarah took a step back, trying to appear non-threatening. But your feelings and well-being are important too, Slinek. You must not discount yourself. Out of some sense of guilt or obligation. Obligation? I love him. Did you consider Marcel's feelings at all? To even suggest that I should abandon him? Right, when he needs me the most. It's cruel. It's heartless. We are thinking of Marcel. Listen, he is in a fragile state right now. You are the main thing reminding him that he is human. That is someone cares for him. What would hurt him the most is to hear you call him a monster. A furious growl rumbled in my throat. I would never, short of him eating my family in front of me. Anyway, I hate that anyone would suggest otherwise. Then I'll leave you be. Sarah's voice was measured, but there was pleasure in her eyes at my response. If you need anything, you know where to find me. I flicked my ears in acknowledgement and scampered back towards my human's chamber without hesitation. After the mention of being pried away from a cell, all I wanted was to have him back in my sight. What if he had an episode while I was gone? Once he was in my periphery, I could rest assured that he was okay. Marcel was cleaned his plate during my absence and was seated on the edge of his bed. His predatory eyes were staring into space, unblinking. There was a hint of a twitch by his lip, as if he was biting his cheek. The human jumped a little when I leapt onto the mattress. I coiled my tail around his wrist and noted how he slowly unclenched his fist. Slodek, he sighed, I missed you. Before, I had attributed his aloof moments to the primitive narcotics in the IVs, but in light of Sarah's words, it was apparent that the different culprit was to blame. I felt ashamed of myself for not picking up on the cues sooner. My preoccupation with these physical injuries caused me to overlook the obvious. What were you thinking about just now? I blurted. The human forced a smile. Y you don't, don't want to know. I do. You can tell me anything, Mark. Not this. Try me. His gaze darkened. I'm thinking, I wanted to kill Sovlin. Get in line. I'm quite serious. I was fantasizing about it. Does that make me a bad person? A bloodthirsty predator? I'd shed no tears over his death. It's not fair that he got away scot free. You're a good person who's trying to process something terrible and yes, has more aggressive instincts. You didn't deserve any of what he did to you. Thanks, buddy. You don't have to thank me. I should have asked you about your mental health sooner. How do those memories make you feel? Are you able to talk about it? I don't know. When Soblin was about to shoot me, I uh, felt relief that it was over. Profound relief. I was ready for him to pull the trigger. I was only sorry that you had to see it, and that Zahn was kidnapping you because of me. Don't worry about me. All that matters to me is that you're here, and you recover. That is why I need you to let me push myself, Slinek. I heard we're going to war with the Gojids, and I want to join. Even if it's just to fly a ship to run logistics. I need to be cleared for action. But you're safer here. Why would you want to risk your life again so soon? To go after Sufflin. To deal with my anger. All of it. I have to do something. And I didn't know how to tell you. It's been idle that drives me mad. Fine. When will we be leaving? The human blinked. We? I'm coming with you. If I have to stow away in your duffel bag, you can't get rid of me that easily. Moisture glistened in Marcel's hazel eyes and a low chuckle rumbled from his vocal cords. A silent vow formed in my mind that I would protect him better this time around, even if it meant shipping off to an active war zone surrounded by trained predators with guns. Something told me that I wouldn't be the only Venlil tagging along for the humans' war efforts, though there was no formal declaration from the governor yet. I think we had chosen a side. The fates of our species were intertwined, for better or for worse. End of chapter. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barkey, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian.